Alright, welcome to the Atari Punk console channel again. Tonight we're building the FM stereo transmitter. That is this board right here. Lots of different things we got. Some mounting pieces for the inside of the case here. The case is already drilled for the antenna hole there. Comes with these uh, panels for the front and back. Antenna resistors, uh, trimmer uh, pot potentiometers in there, little trimmers in there, some transistors. We got our uh, capacitors here, electrolytic and um, ceramic type. You got some coils in there too. That's the FM IC right there, the FM transmitter integrated chip right there. That's what this whole kit is based off of, is that chip right in there. Over here we got the tuning tool, the switch, the uh, battery connector, and the uh, connectors for the RF frequencies and your audio connectors. And so the first step is installing the IC socket for this little IC right here, the BA1404629H2O. It is the FM transmitter IC. It's for it's the one that this whole entire circuit is based off of that chip the whole thing is based off that chip right there and so now we're installing the resistors and we're to the point where we're going to select the pre-emphasis in microseconds um, there is the choices are uh, 75 microseconds for the US and uh, 50 microseconds for uh, Europe. So could you guess which one we're going to use here? That's right, we're going to use the 15K resistors to give us the 75 microsecond um, pre-emphasis because we're in the United States. Otherwise we'd be using the 10K resistors if we were in Europe. All right, so now we got most of the resistors done, and the potentiometers are in here too. Um, we're left with one more resistor here. It's resistor eight right here. This one is to select the frequency range for which um, you're going to be operating the FM transmitter on. Um, so your choices are the low end band, which is the 180k one at the top there, uh, for uh, frequencies between 81, or 88 and 91 megahertz. And then you got the middle portion band for uh, that's the 220k ohm resistor right there uh, for uh, frequencies between 90 and 97 megahertz. And then we got the high end FM band for frequencies between 95 and 108 megahertz. And uh, when we get to doing the capacitors too, there's a capacitor selection we're going to have to do as well to choose which uh, band range we're going to use. Um, so I think I'm going to use the mid-range band and uh, we're going to see once this is all done how this works. Alright so up next is the installation of the voltage regulator and this transistor. So we have I'm holding in my hand here the voltage regulator the 78L02 and right here uh, laying on the bench table here is the uh, transistor the 2N2570 and uh, these are easily confused with each other because they look you know, almost exactly the same so always make sure you're checking the labels before you're installing these and you'll see uh, on here on the board the um, voltage regulator will go um, right uh, right here right there and then the transistor usually goes in a place that's marked with a Q right there
All right, so now that all of the resistors are installed, we have uh, went ahead and installed the coils here. We've got the slug tuned uh, coil right here, and over here we have the um, 13 turn air coil and uh, the um, voltage regulator and uh, transistor are installed too here. Um, so we'll move on to the next step here which will be installing the capacitors. Alright so now we're uh, up to the uh, stereo generator part of this and uh, it involves this tiny little crystal right here. This is probably the smallest part so far out of the whole bin of parts here and uh, they recommend that you save some of the leads from the from the things that you've installed so I saved quite a few of them because what you have to do is you're gonna have to put this, the crystal in solder it into those two holes and then use one of those leads to hold it down right there it's gonna sit right on there on the board right there <coughs> so that's that's the that part and then there's two capacitors that go along with this part of the um, uh, these two right here 11 and 12 and then I'll have the stereo generator section complete and then we'll move on to the power supply section alright alright so now we're done with the stereo generator section of the circuit which consists of that little crystal right there we were just talking about and uh, these uh, inputs here and these little capacitors right here that's the stereo generator section on now to the power supply section alright so now we're done with the power supply section which is uh, these capacitors right here these larger capacitors in this voltage regulator the power switch over here and the uh, power input in these coils right here which uh, look similarly to resistors but they're uh, they're different the L3 here and uh, there's another another coil around here somewhere L1 right here and L2 they look like resistors but they're not they, they're much different okay that's the power supply section and uh, next up is uh, actually the section the multiplexer balance is already done which is this one right here this little trimmer that, that we did a little earlier and we also did these earlier these uh, transistor and the in the resist the, uh, voltage regulator so uh, next part is to finish the multiplexed audio pilot and the RF oscillator and the RF amp and the RF output so pretty much we'll be done after doing that in the battery holder so uh, the next section of this video will be putting the case together and showing you the operation alright now we're working on the uh, radio frequency oscillator section and uh, we, we're up to the part where we have to make a choice here for capacitor number 18 and our choices are a um, 22 picofarad capacitor, a 27 picofarad capacitor, and a 15 picofarad capacitor. And you can see that I've already chosen the 22 picofarad capacitor because that is the mid-range capacitor uh, that goes along with the 220k ohm resistor that we have chosen before for um, resistor number 8 if you remember from earlier because we're going to use the mid-range alright so next up is uh, operation alright so we're almost done here building the FM transmitter uh, last thing we need to do is put it all in the case the uh, battery connectors all installed here and the screw sticking out right here has been soldered in from the bottom for the antenna here um, and so we've got the uh, we got an RF connector right here, and um, so we'll we'll have this in the case here pretty soon, and then we'll operate it, and we'll show you how it works, and we'll see 
if it actually does work. Because the last one I did, the AM one, I, I had a really hard time getting that one to work. But I guess we'll have to go over that one and try that one again. This one has a whole lot more parts than the AM transmitter. So we'll see. Alright, so now we've got the uh, whole thing in a case now. Uh, so you can see the antenna sticking out from the top of it here. And we got the power button here in the front and in the back, the connectors. So next thing is to actually get this thing hooked up and transmitting. Now of course we're going to have to take off the lid here to adjust the um, frequency inside because um, if you recall there was that um, that little coil right there it needs to be tuned with the tuning tool in order to select the proper frequency so we're going to go ahead and get that situated and we'll be right back with you in a second with a broadcast coming from this FM transmitter alright so now for the testing portion of this uh, FM transmitter here we gotta keep this brief because um, we've tuned in our station um, we didn't. I didn't do any adjustment on the uh, the coil that adjusts the station, and I've discovered through testing that it's on 91.5, and so you can see it's on right now. So there's no sound coming out of this stereo. So now when I turn it off, and you'll hear the broadcast that's coming from this station. That not of ourselves. You hear that voice? That's so coming from this station. Now I'll turn the FM transmitter level. back on, and it'll it'll turn off that station. Now if I had a signal going in here, it would be playing whatever signal I had going into it. But I don't right now. I'm just using no signal at all, just for testing purposes right now, just to make sure it actually works. And it does, and there we go. There you have it. The FM transmitter is God. now built. So there's an, 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 an So thanks for tuning in, fans of the Atari Punk Console channel. And keep watching for new videos and subscribe right down here. Subscribe right here.